I'm representing the yes vote that there is a place for religion and science. Based on who I am and what I do, this is a natural fit. For I am, or I, at least I seek to be, a follower of Jesus, and therefore would be classified as a Christian. And I'm also a scientist and a lecturer in physics. Thus, unless I'm medically schizophrenic, my life shows that there is a place for both, and it's possible to believe in both, as the motion has just been changed. When given the debate title, I was honestly confused as to what exactly the debate was or where it was. I, I didn't really know, but I concluded that the problem is likely to do with one of semantics and possibly caused by confusion of the words and definitions. So, religion and science, again, not is there a place for both, but can we believe both? That's why. Can we believe both? The short answer is yes, of course. And over the next um, 14 minutes or so, I'll show you why this is so. I thought it would be useful to find a source for my arguments that would be compatible with the general views of the Philosoph Society and my opponent for that matter. So I've chosen um, Dr. Eugenie Scott, who is an atheist and, uh, um, and has many awards for things like uh, um, Skeptical Inquiry and the Humanist Award for Isaac Asimov Society and uh, was a signatory on the Third Humanist Manifesto. So I'm using her as my um, source material for my arguments because she's um, aligned closely with many of you who believe that you'll oppose my position. So to begin, there are two terms I need to define, which I think probably caused the confusion here. And in this particular argument, I need to go for them. So let's talk about these two terms. The first is faith, and the second is, um, is science. So let's start with faith, or belief, or possibly even religious belief. And to start with, I need to say what faith is not. Dawkins argues that religious belief is never based on evidence, or perhaps that it exists despite the evidence. And if this definition is true, then I would agree with my opponent already, and that you cannot believe in both um, um, science and religion, because that type of belief is quite irrational and it's not to be respected. But is this a correct definition of faith of, or religious belief? And the answer is no, absolutely not. It's rather Dawkins' favorite definition, and, um, but it is not, and I repeat, not an accepted definition by any major English dictionary, or, nor is it an accepted definition by the majority of Christian denominations. And I only say that majority to be precise, because the fact is I don't know any Christian denomination who would believe Dawkins' definition. Rather, faith is a rational belief based on the evidence, not in spite of the evidence. And this is the same definition for faith that Dr. Eugene Scott, the atheist, gives. So when she defines science, she defines it science saying that science is based on certain philosophical assumptions. Science believes by faith a few things, um, meaning a rational belief based on the evidence. Number one, science believes there is an objective reality. Number two, that the world operates according to regularities. And number three, that humans are able to understand these regularities. We know that we don't understand everything now as scientists, and that there may be things that are fundamentally beyond our comprehension, and we're okay with that. Now, science has limitations as well. It's restricted to explaining the natural world only, the world of matter and energy. It's restricted to only using natural causes, meaning matter and energy, and it tests its explanations against the natural world. It's not just enough to feel something, you need to test them. And this testing is done by holding things constant, and that's the way we, the scientific method works, and we restrict our science to natural causes. Why? Not because science is atheistic by nature, because it is not, but rather because if God exists, we cannot control him. So whether you're a theist, a Christian like I am, who believes in God, or an atheist, either way, I would never claim that I could control God, so therefore my science is based on um, natural causes. Now there's a characteristic of science that I need to state as well, that science gives us reliable knowledge, but not knowledge that cannot be questioned. It must be falsifiable, it does change, Facts change, laws change, and theories change in science, and that's just the way it is. We expect that. Things change. Now, how about religion? Well, that whole definition, by the way, was again according to Dr. Scott, the atheist. Now, let's take a look at her definition of religion. 
a set of rules and beliefs that people have about the non-material universe and its inhabitants, but also about the material world. And she says that religion has certain assumptions, that something exists beyond matter and energy, and I quite agree, number one. And number two, it is possible to interact with the non-material, I agree with that as well. There are characteristics of, your, of religion that Dr. Scott refers to, that truth is revealed also by sacred sources, things like the Bible, that religion believes in supernatural beings or powers, that in the mystical, in the sense of the sacred, the feelings of awe, the afterlife, and concern with morals and ethics. Now, obviously, not all religions fit in all these categories, and I'm really speaking as a Christian, because that's the only thing that I can speak on intelligently. So is there a place for both religion and science? Can you believe both? Of course. This same rational thought that I use in my science, I use as a Christian as well. So where does this idea from, of conflict come from? I'm not completely sure. Part of it is from bad, histor it, bad historians, but possibly becomes, it comes from another false definition. And that's a confusion that um, Dr. Scott, again the atheist, or mind you, um, talks about. According to her, there are two types of materialism. First, there's methodological materialism, which is simply the way we do science. We use a method based on the natural to do our science. But there's also a second type of materialism, which is philosophical materialism. And this is separate from science. It is not science, and they are not the same. Philosophical materialism says that matter and energy is all that there is, and it is sufficient to account for and explain all that there is, and that there is no God by definition. So thus, philosophical materialism is, from my perspective, this isn't um, Dr. Scott anymore, but from my perspective, an atheistic substitute for religion, which is based on science. But there's a clear, clear conflict, yes there is, between philosophical materialism and religion, philosophical materialism sometimes called scientism. It cannot coexist with religion but neither can scientism coexist with many other disciplines like art and music and literature because they're not scientific. Too often people get these things confused. Scientism is a view based on this philosophical materialism that unless something can be explained by science, then it is not true. Or stating it another way, all truth must be scientific truth. But according to this very definition of scientism, it cannot exist with religion because it's defined in that way. But, so if the debate is about, can I believe in scientism and religion, then I would say, of course not, they're incompatible. But, before I return to science proper, as opposed to scientism, I need to make a short comment on scientism itself. It's self-refuting. For if all truth must be based on science, then the very statement, all truth must be based on science, must be false, because those very words are not a scientific statement, and therefore not based on science. Thus, using the basic principles of logic, scientism is self-refuting. But it's not science, so that's not technically part of the debate, I hope. So let's contrast um, science and religion, according to, again, Dr. Scott. And both of us agree that science and religion both believe things based on faith, which is based on logic and evidence but only religion based that there are concepts such as morality, the afterlife, spiritual beings, revelation as areas of truth, as opposed to just what opinion, I suppose. For these areas, science has absolutely nothing to say, period, and it's because science restricts itself to matter and energy. But some of you may have had a problem with two of my assertions, possibly. So let me give you the two assertions, just for fun. You may have a problem with my statement that science believes anything on faith, and you may have a problem with my statement that religion believes anything on faith. But as I stated, you have different things in your mind. Possibly when I say that science believes anything on faith, you may be thinking, but isn't it all based on fact? And when I say that religion be believes anything on faith, you may have a problem with my assertion that faith is based on evidence and rational thought. So let's take a look at science first. It's based on mathematics. I think you can agree with that. And mathematics understands certain postulates to be true, yet at the same time has proofs which show that it's impossible to prove that all of the fundamental postulates are true. And my mathematician friends tell me that they accept all is true even they, though they know that they can prove 
that they, that they cannot prove the law to be true, yet they believe them anyway. And this is the basis of mathematics, which becomes the basis of physics. And over later on in the pub, if you want me to talk about the crazy things that we believe as physicists, the dual nature of, of, of light, you know, whether it's a particle or a wave, and these things which um, I could bore you to death. So I won't do that right now. Religion, religion is also based on faith. Um, so I, to this, I'll turn to Dawkins, um, who is, of course, such a proponent of such things. Dawkins says that if there is a God, then he should actually do something and make a difference in our world. And I agree. The invisible pink elephants or flying teapots are quite irrelevant and foolish, and please don't bring them up. They're not part of this debate. Those are just, uh, they have no place in here at all. So I agree with Dawkins that if there's a God, then he should do something. Christianity believes that God has made a difference in the world, not only just making everything and holding things all together, as our scriptures teach us, but also communicating repeatedly with people. But there's more. Christianity teaches that God came to earth to communicate directly with us, and this happened through Jesus, who those of us who follow him refer to as the Lord Jesus or Jesus Christ and other things that you've heard before. And as a follower of Jesus, I believe that God also provides me with his spirit as a comforter and guide. And so these are sources of revelation. Through revelation from God, Christians believe that God created the world and created humans in the image of God. Theologians all understand the image of God to mean our ability to think, to create, and to reason. Nothing to do with our, the shape of our bodies. Thus, the foundational views of science started through the basis of the, the Christian um, philosophical way of thinking. Um, a fellow, again, not a Christian, Toby Huff, writes in a, his science book, Intellectual Curiosity and the Scientific Revolution, that in Europe, because of the Greek, Jewish, and Christian heritage, there was a fundamental idea that there was order in the universe due to the, creati the creation of all things by a God of order. And in this environment, it was an acceptable area of investigation to seek and understand God's creation. And this spawned modern science. At a time when Europe was way behind the rest of the world, but science happened in Europe. So if we take a look at science and religion in contrast, we, they both believe there's objective reality. Science cannot say anything about how or why that reality is present using science. Yes, scientists are happy to make suggestions, but science can't actually say anything about it. Religion, in contrast, also believes in the objective reality and has taught this as, um, in, as long as it's been around. The world operates according to regularities. This is something that science believes. Um, and these, this is an assumption that we've done faith by science because it cannot be proven. We can only see a tiny part of this enormous universe. So we believe that based on faith as scientists, as religion teaches that the, the regularities are there because of God being God of order. So we don't have a problem with that from either perspective. They coexist nicely. And the, number th the third thing that scientists believe is that they're able to understand these regularities. This one's a bit more subtle. Scientists know we don't understand anything and that things may be beyond our comprehension. And this is really believed on faith. For if we were simply machines for the propagation of our DNA, as you would have been taught by um, various atheist biologists, why should we even trust what's going on in our head at all? Why would this gene machine be able to discuss philosophy and science in the first place? I'm not convinced that that's rational. Wouldn't we be better off to save our resources for being stronger and faster? Interesting. On the other hand, when religion teaches that man has made the image of God, this ability of man to be rational makes complete and total sense. So, now that means I've got what, one minute? One minute left? So, I, I guess I'm, I might be done by definition. So there's some superficial evidence that science and uh, religion can exist together. I think of people like uh, Francis Collins, who leads the Human General Project. I think of Charles Towns, one of my heroes you probably haven't heard of, but received the Nobel Prize for the invention of the laser, who says that both science and religion have many things to teach each other. For those who are um, proponents and want to talk, say, about uh, evolution, there's um, Theodosius Dovansky, who oh, I can't pronounce his name, apologies, one of the pioneers of the modern evolutionary th synthesis, is famous for saying, nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. 
And this is quoted extensively by atheists. It's interesting, though, that in the same article, Dovansky writes, the creator has created the living world not by caprice, but by evolution propelled by natural selection. Just interesting that even there, the person, um, this famous scientist, believes that they fit together. I think the problem is really one of definitions, as whether in religion or science, we are thinking things rationally on the basis of evidence, and ultimately we need to be teaching students to distinguish between scientific evidence and their philosophical, theological, and political associations. Thank you.